Hi guys, I'm long overdue for my review for the latest Tom Ford Private Blend Collection fragrance, Soleil Brulant, this one right here. But here it is, I'm doing it better late than never. So I've got all the info on this for you and how it wears, price, everything like that, all covered here. But I'm also gonna give you six alternatives to Tom Ford's Soleil Brulant. So if you wanna find out about Soleil Brulant, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, today I'm talking about Soleil Brulant. And you know, I'm always anticipating the latest Private Blend collection fragrances from Tom Ford. Even though they're really, really pricey, some of the uh, coloring that they're giving us with their bottles lately are becoming, uh, you know, collector's items for me. Because I do collect these uh, bottles and uh, this one has not been done before, uh, similar to the previous one, uh, the Tuberose New. But uh, I'll let you know all about this one. You know, I am enjoying this one a lot more than Tuberose New, but I'll give you all the details on it. Plus, I'll give you six alternatives that uh, if you think this is way overpriced, which I think it's overpriced, and uh, the alternatives might be something that you might look into rather than getting uh, this particular fragrance. They're not going to smell identical, but they'll be great alternatives to uh, Soleil Brulant. Either way, I'll let you know all about this and the alternatives, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So how many of you are fans of the Tom Ford Private Blend Collection fragrances? How many of you think they're overpriced? How many of you can afford it, you wear it, you buy it, and things like that. How many of you buy the, you know, the large decanter flacons like I do here? How many of you buy the smaller 50 ml bottles? Because this one only comes in a 50 ml bottle, and then also a the 250 ml bottle here. Um, I ordered this from somewhere where I got a promotion, so I was able to get it for around $700, but a, a large bottle like this is $895, $900 almost, but definitely more because uh, this does not include tax. So this cost me about 900, well, it would cost me about 970 if I went to Neiman Marcus to buy this, almost $1,000 with tax. So that's a lot of money for a 250 ml bottle. Uh, you know, a f perfume, but it is cheaper if you do this because uh, it, it turns out to be $3.89 per milliliter for a 250 ml with tax included versus a 50 ml of this. It turns out to be $7.61 per mil price if you do the 50 ml, which is $3.50. So you get five times more juice for $3.89 per mil versus 761 per mil, but you have to pay almost $1,000 to get the large, and what are you gonna do with all that juice unless you're splitting it with a bunch of different people, one of you gets to keep the bottle, all that good stuff, so you got all that to consider. But let me tell you what the fragrance is like. So Tom Ford's Soleil Brulant is a 2021 launch. The perfumer I could not find any info on, so I don't know who the perfumer is, and of course I discussed the prices with you on this particular bottle I have versus the 50 ml. And for notes in Soleil Brulant, we have mandarin orange, bergamot, pink peppercorn for the top notes. Heart notes features orange flower, black honey. Base notes features amber, resins, woods, vetiver, leather, incense. You know, I really do enjoy the way Soleil Brulant wears and the way it smells, and I do find similarities to Tuberose New, and I'll tell you a little bit about that, that comparison, and then come back to this, because I don't want to forget about that. Uh, Tuberose New, uh, I, I enjoyed, but I didn't love. Tuberose New was really kind of gummy, like it was like gum resins experience. It wasn't flow, it didn't flow very well. It felt disconnected to me, the wearing experience of that fragrance, but under all the smells of that fragrance, there was something honeyed coming through, uh, and it was reminding me uh, of nothing at the time, but it reminded me of honey, but now that I'm wearing this, this is reminding me of um, Tuberose New. So, there might be kind of a connection with them, I don't know, but it is. Uh, so that's the difference here with the 
the two different fragrances, but I much prefer Soleil Brulon over Tuberose New. I just felt, like I said, it was disconnected. It didn't flow very well. This one does flow really well. As I said, I am enjoying the way this one is wearing on me. The fragrance starts off with citruses, but you know, you've got the citruses there of the mandarin orange. It's a sweet uh, citrus with the bergamot here, which is your uh, typical citrus note that's used in a lot of perfumery. You have a little bit of spice from the pink pepper with a little bit of a floral sea there as well. But it's nicely segues into the orange flower and the black honey. And for me, these two notes are the stars of this fragrance. The orange flower is really, really prominent. It's very, very standout. Black honey, they're calling it black honey. I don't know if I experience black honey. It's just honey to me. It's a honeyed experience. You definitely pick up the honey smell in here. It's it's sort of animalic, so you gotta kind of dig honey in fragrances because I always associate honey uh, having animalic qualities. But it's not like something like civet or castorium or musk, although this does get a little musky, but there is that kind of animalic undertone of honey smells uh, in here, which I quite like. It uh, wears really beautifully on me, and uh, I enjoy that about this particular note, and also the way this fragrance is wearing. The orange blossom, or orange flower, they're saying here, I always felt like there's something honeyed under there anyway. There is a citrus honeyed kind of an experience with orange blossom neroli kind of fragrances, so it really does work beautifully with the black honey or honey note that's in here in the heart. And again, as I said, these two notes are what's basically uh, running the show for me. Orange flower, black honey, they're really, really working beautifully together. But the fragrance settles to an ambered, honeyed, orange blossom experience. Uh, there's some woody touches under there. Not a lot. It's more resinous woody to me with the amber. Uh, at the same time, you're still experiencing that orange flower and the honey that's already in the heart notes, but you're kind of smelling a diminished form of those notes because it's now combined with all the base notes uh, that you're picking up now. Vetiver does come in a little bit. Light, light, very light smokiness comes in, and it does have a slight leathery touch too, but it's not a leather fragrance. It's not ultra leathery. It's not ultra incense -y. So in the base, it's mostly about the amber resins and woods along with the uh, orange flower and the black honey. So, you know, it wears beautifully on me. I really do enjoy it. It does remind me of one of the fragrances I'm gonna to talk to you about. Only one it reminds me of. Uh, the rest of them are just alternatives, although the, the one that it reminds me of is also an alternative because this is really, really overpriced, I think, and you might find the alternative to be a better value. But it wears sort of close to the skin. It doesn't have massive cloud projection, sillage, and things like that. Uh, not necessarily typically of uh, Tom Ford fragrances, although it's a designer, it's Estee Lauder, so their fragrances are not going to be really big. But, you know, I've been wearing it from a little uh, bottle that I put in uh, here. I'm not, you know, I don't have a spray bottle of their brand, so sometimes when I wear it from a decant uh, atomizer, it doesn't spray as strong and it doesn't... Uh, perform as loud, so that's how I tested this fragrance. I'm not spraying it from an official Tom Ford bottle. Obviously, this does not spray. This is a, a decanter uh, bottle. So that's what I tested this with, and, and I definitely do agree that if you use the actual manufacturer or brand's sprayers, the performance on me would be much better in comparison to an atomizer. I totally believe this, because atomizers that you fill up, they don't spray as well, you know? They're just kind of like, cheap uh, atomizers that you buy from Amazon or something, and they're just for you to test the fragrances. So if I tested it out with its own official bottle, would it project more? Would it have uh, more sillage and things like that? I don't know, but what I experienced here is a more subdued experience. And for me, to begin with, honeyed fragrances or honeyed in general, they don't have a lot of big clouds. They might have the longevity, which did th th this did have, but it's not like a screamer of a fragrance. I felt like Tuberose New, on the other hand, was a screamer, maybe because it was all the notes in there that made it like that. But this particular fragrance to me is a great wearing experience. Very, very cozy and a beautiful blend of the orange flower with the black honey. Is it my, one of my all-time favorites from Tom Ford Private Blend? Still no, I think the top ones for me are Noir de Noir, Oud Wood, Tobacco Vani, Tuscan Leather. There might be a few others, but I think this is definitely solid and it's uh, definitely very, very wearable. And for a honey fragrance lover, if you have the money, do it. But again, as I said, it's overpriced. So 
only do it when you have the money or buy a decant or something if you can afford it. But I wanted to have the, you know, the, the bottle as a collector item because they haven't done a, a gold like this. Unless they have, I, I missed it, but I do have it and I am enjoying the smell. Now, for alternatives, I think the one that it really, really reminds me of is uh, Zoologist Perfumes uh, B. Uh, I think it really does because it's a floral honey combination. And this is also a very floral honey combination. Honey and royal jelly is what they credit. Um, beeswax, royal jelly, honey, all of that come uh, in or go into this fragrance. But... Uh, this seems to me a little more powdery and more yellow flowers. You do experience them, but they do hint at one another, really do. Because when I was first wearing the Soleil Brulant, I thought to myself, that's reminding me of B. The other thing uh, I should also mention about Soleil Brulant is it does have a kind of an indie perfumery style. It doesn't smell like a traditional Tom Ford fragrance. So... I don't know if that was intentional. I don't know who the perfumer is to kind of say, okay, this is his style or her style, but it did feel like it was a little more out there is not the word, but different than your typical Tom Ford branded uh, fragrances. And that's why it reminded me of this because I find Zoologist perfumes to be very indie niche and uh, it hinted at it. They're not identical, but it really reminds me of one another. And I think that's because of the honeyed touches in here with the floral touches. So I don't know, maybe you should uh, compare the two. If you like the idea of honey and or Soleil Brulant, uh, maybe you should check out B to see uh, how it works uh, or wears with you. Either way, that's B. That's the closest to Soleil Brulant. Now, as a completely different alternative, I'm going to recommend by Killian's Back to Black. Now, this is a lot more subtle than uh, Tom Ford's Soleil Brulant. And here's the thing. I do prefer Back to Black over Soleil Brulant. I don't, I don't know why, but there's something really, really cozy about the way this one smells, even though it has the tobacco in it, but it smells like authentic honey to me. Like literally I'm smelling honey uh, out of a jar. But uh, by Killian's Back to Black is very subdued. It's a very light fragrance. It wears very light on me but smells really, really great. One of the better to honey uh, fragrances. And even though it's contrasted with tobacco, it does have cherry touches, vanilla, raspberry, almonds, gingerbread, amber, you know, it has kind of similar ideas of notes. It doesn't have a lot of floral touches unless it does, and I'm not picking them up, but it's a great combination of honey with tobacco, light cherry-ish vanilla touches. I think it's a great, great fragrance. One of the better ones from Killian. Sadly, it's just very subdued on me. It wears very, very light, but what can we do? It's a great smell, uh, it's not a beast. But that's by Killian's Back to Black, a great alternative, I think. The next one I'm gonna talk to you about is Floris's Honey Oud. Here we have honey combined with oud, and this in comparison to Montal's Honey Oud, which I think is more oud than honey. Here, it's definitely more honey than oud, although I think it's very equal. A little more honey, though. But Floris's Honey Oud, I think, wears beautifully. It's very syrupy, honeyed, but it's contrasted with the oud that's featured in here. And then there's also rose, bergamot, amber, vanilla, patchouli, musk, and labdanum. So there are ambery touches. We're getting further away from the way Soleil Brulant smells now. They're nothing alike. Uh, just they share the honey note here, and I think it would be a great alternative if you felt like, you know, Soleil Brulant is way overpriced, which it is, as I said, I think it's overpriced as well. It should be at least in the regular private blend collection, not the pricier private blend collection. I don't even know why they have this pricier private blend collection. It's just really, really kind of weird. Just put all your fragrances in your regular private blend collection at about 650 for a 250 ml bottle rather than paying like freaking almost a thousand dollars with tax for a 250 ml bottle that's really really expensive but this is a great alternative i think as a honey uh, alternative uh, for soleil brulant just Keep in mind, it is oody, it is a little rosy as well, but I think it's a beautiful syrupy, ambery, honeyed fragrance. Honey Oud from Florist, and again, as I said, it's not Montal's Honey Oud. I do have a comparison of those two if you wanna catch it. I always feel like Honey Oud from Montal is more oud than honey. The next honey fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is Parfums de Marly's Wajan. Now this is going into a gourmand direction, and it, smells like honeyed pastries with spices and we're further going away from Soleil Brulant. There's no or 
you know, there's no floral touches in here, but they, there is osmanthus and that osmanthus is a flower, but I think osmanthus has a kind of, you know, fruity, leathery undertone, more fruity, less leathery. And so here it's giving us the, you know, like apricots, kind of uh, nectarines like touches. But I think this is a great honeyed fragrance. Just keep in mind, you are definitely further away from Soleil Brulant, but as an alternative, something gourmand with honey, uh, Parfums of Marley's Wajan, I think is a great fragrance for you to try. Two more honeyed alternatives for you for Soleil Brulant. This next one is a brand I don't speak much about. This is Giovanna Antonelli's 811 Absoluto. So this one to me is a great ambery honeyed experience with honey, of course, Tolu balsam giving us the ambery touches here. It's a balsamic note. And then there's also patchouli in here to kind of give us a contrast of earthy woodiness against the syrupy honey and the ambery Tolu balsam. It's really, really beautiful. And uh, I don't know what's going on with the brand, actually. I did a video about these uh, fragrances from Giovanna Antonelli. La, mm, three, four years ago. It's been a while. It's on my channel. But I think this is probably one of their more solid ones. And of course, I did feature it in a top 20 honey fragrances video that was uh, aired about a year ago, maybe uh, almost two years ago. If you wanted to find out more about honey fragrances, definitely catch that one. But I think this is a great scent. It's a nice ambery experience, very balsamic with honey and tolu balsam. And then of course, uh, patchouli comes in as well. Uh, it's woody and earthy at the same time. Check it out, it's Giovanna Antonelli 811 Absoluto. And the last fragrance I'm gonna leave you with for a honeyed alternative to Soleil Brulant is Cours des Anges from the House of Atelier d'Azores. Now we're going into a fruity direction. Honey and fruits, you know, like a fruit compote drizzled with honey kind of thing. That's what you get with this one. But it's lots of citruses with blood orange and you can totally, really totally smell the blood orange in here. Really, really stand out blood orange note. I love that note. With honey, I think it works great. I mean, I would drizzle honey on top of fruits, maybe on top of yogurt. Uh, I, I think it would make a great uh, a breakfast uh, uh, item. But this also has amber, carrot seeds, pears, black currant, osmanthus. The osmanthus comes again and the osmanthus give us, gives us a fruity touch. Of course, stone fruit, you know, it gives us uh, touches of like uh, nectarines and um, peaches and apricots. It's definitely like that with that light leathery undertone. But I think for me, this is more uh, mostly about the honey, the blood orange with the amber. The carrot seed does provide a little bit of a powdery touch and then the other fruits come in. It's beautiful, but I think even though this is honey, I would use this more of a spring and fall fragrance. It's not necessarily potent for winter and it's also not necessarily light and fresh for summer, although you can get away in the summer, but just keep in mind, honey can get cloying for people and this might do that. But it's a great, great fragrance, a beautiful combination of honey with blood oranges and amber and other fruits. So check it out. Atelier d'Azores Curs des Anges uh, is the sixth and final honeyed alternative to Soleil Brulant, the latest uh, Tom Ford Private Blend Collection fragrance. And again, I'll say this one more time. I really do like this one. It's definitely a lot more solid than Tuberose New. I just wish it was less expensive. It's way overpriced, absolutely overpriced, too overpriced, you know? Put it in your regular Tom Ford Private Blend Collection fragrances or just make it a hundred dollars more, not fucking, not freaking so much more. It's like, like I said, almost a thousand dollars with tax for this thing. That's way too much money, way too much money. Overly priced, way overpriced. If you have private blend for 650 for 250 ml, make the, the, the higher end private blend just maybe $100 more, not even $100, maybe $50 more. But either way, that's my complaint about this fragrance. I still like the fragrance. I'm glad to have the bottle. It's a collector's item for me. But other than that, those are my thoughts on the new Tom Ford Soleil Brulant. One more thing I want to mention. Um, this is part of a collection of Soleil themed uh, fragrances, I believe. I never really got into the other ones, but this one I, I wanted to because not only the bottle is beautiful, but I like the idea of honey and fragrances. So that's why I've gotten this one. I haven't really dug into the other Soleil fragrances. I know there are fans out there and it also might be tropical coconutty leaning fragrances, which I, which I should check out. But I think uh, in comparison to those, 
which I don't know how to compare them because I don't really know too much about them. I really think this is a solid release. Either way, those are my thoughts on Tom Ford's Private Blend Collection Soleil Brulant. Let me know what your thoughts are. Have you sampled this one? Do you enjoy honey and fragrances? Do you like the six alternatives that I've spoken to you, spoke to you about today? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.